a staggering amount of I-bonds were redeemed last year, 2023, creating a lot of confusion on taxes. What do you need to know? I've got that more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. The very popular I-bond coming out of COVID uh, and all the inflation that we saw. Very, one of the most popular investments over the past couple of years. I've talked about and I've done lots of videos explaining how it works and how complicated it is and that at some point, this investment that you fell in love with, you will fall out of love with because it is very complicated and we are going to be grinding, whether you believe it or not, we're gonna be grinding inflation back down to those normal levels, even if it takes longer than any of us want. And at some point, this, this I bond, this inflation bond will end up paying less interest than what it's worth, uh, it, like the, the hassle, and you'll cash it in and say, I should do something else with this money. And there's been this, I, I've, I've updated right here on this channel, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. At, at times when, hey, should you consider it now? Should you not? Just did a video about this recently. And one of the things that I mentioned was, well, if you do feel that it's time to, to, uh, to cash in these I bonds, be aware of the tax ramifications. Well, take a look at this. Wall Street Journal just did this article, oh, just over a week ago or so, talking about this, the tax complications with I-bonds and how millions of people are going to be facing this complexity for filing their taxes for 2023. So take a look at this. Over $6 billion of I-bonds were cashed in, were redeemed in 2023. That's 22 times the normal amount. The average amount of I-bond that was, that was redeemed was just over five grand and, and shows the, the number of people that cashed them in. So we're talking millions of people now cashed in their I-bonds, which is, you know, which is just fine. I've, I've shared that, listen, the interest rate, while it was you know, over 9% and, and over 7% and 6%, now is over 5%. But if you bought an I-bond, if you invested in the I-bond back when the fixed rate was just zero, then your annualized interest rate right now is about four, a little bit less than 4%. And it, it depending on your situation, to me, that, that might be about the time when you consider cashing them in, or maybe you wait until we see what the next interest rate's gonna be in May, um, because 4% is still a decent interest rate. Uh, you can find a high yield savings paying four and a half or maybe close to five. So I, I think the wave of lots of people redeeming or, or cashing in their I-bonds will continue here in 2024. But if you redeemed or cashed in your I-bond in 2023, like millions of other people, what's at stake? Taxes, taxes, that's right. So when you, when you invest in an I-bond, the interest that it's earning is, for the most part, it's, a, it's, a, it's accrued. It's, it's, uh, it's, you're not having to report it on your taxes each and every year. So it's very possible you invested, you, you bought into an I-bond in 2021, you got out of it two years later in 2023, and you've, you know, you've never really had to report anything on your taxes, so it might be completely off your radar. But that interest income is taxable when you cash in your I-bond. It's at that time in that calendar year, that tax year that you cash it in, that you've got to report all of the interest on the I bond uh, for, uh, for uh, on your taxes. So there's a limit on how much you can invest in I bonds and say you put 10 grand in way back in 2021 and you've earned, I don't know, $2,500 in interest on that because you were able to catch it well, or maybe two grand in interest on that. Well, that two grand is gonna show up as taxable income if you cash it in in 2023. You're gonna to have to report it on your 2023 taxes that you're filing right now. Is that the end of the world? An extra two grand of income? No. Here's the confusing part. Treasury Direct, the Treasury, they are not sending you a 1099. They are not. I've warned about this before as well. We actually uh, included it on our talk show that Lots of people made changes with where they're holding their savings accounts or, or what they're doing with CDs. And many people have transitioned some of their savings into online savings. And many of those do not send you 1099s. 
and yeah, part of the agreement when you're setting up the account, I suppose you could click for some of these high yield savings and say, no, I still want a paper statement. I still want a paper tax form. Most of them by default, they're, they're going to say you've got to get it online. Treasury Direct is one such place. You, they're not mailing you a 1099. Therefore, if this if this I bond has been off your radar from a tax standpoint because you've held it for two years and you've never had to report interest, and then now you you cash it in, but it's not on your radar that you need to report this as taxable income, or maybe maybe it was on your radar, and eh, I'm probably gonna have to report this at the time you sold it, but then now here in the spring, you never got a tax form. Maybe you're, you've done your taxes and you completely forgot to go out and grab your 1099 and include this interest on your return. So if that's you, if you had I-bonds, you cashed them in last year and you've already filed a return, you, you got on it early and you forgot to include your, your interest income, if you were due a refund, see if you've already received that refund. It's very possible the IRS has already caught this when they're quickly, like, you know, automa automatically uh, reviewing your return. It's very possible they've already seen the inconsistency and will offset your your, your refund. I doubt it, but it's possible. If they if they already issued you a refund or, or, or whatever, then you're gonna need to file an amendment and you're gonna have to show, nope, I needed to report this income, I failed to do so, here's the updated tax return and here's the little bit of tax that I owe. The sooner you do that, the better, because there could be a penalty with interest and so on, uh, and, and though that calculation is dependent on, well, how late were you in filing? And, and therefore, the sooner you catch it, even if you catch it right now before the end of the, the tax filing season, I, that, would be, that would be great, that would be the most economical for you. If you haven't yet filed your return, go out to Treasury Direct, use your login, go out there, grab your 1099, include that in your tax document or give it to your CPA to ensure that this, that this income gets reported on your tax return. Is it taxable to the federal uh, on, on your federal return? Yes, I already shared that. Could you withhold against it? Yes, there's an extra form that you'd need to fill out before you you cash it in, where you could have withheld some of the some of the income on it. Most people are not doing that, and by most, I would assume 99.99% um, are not. Is it taxable on your state tax return if you live in a state that has state taxes? No, savings bond interest should be should be tax exempt. Are there any other opportunities for you? To, not have to pay tax on this. Well, you could say that it was for, you cashed in your I-bond for educational expenses. If that's the truth, then the interest should be, should be tax exempt. But that's a, other than that, it's going to be taxable on your federal return. So all of this, it begs the question, getting proactive or the issue of getting proactive with your tax picture, planning ahead so that you are aware and avoid surprises. Aware of tax opportunities, avoiding tax surprises. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K. Wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go on and take your next wise step in your financial life.